Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, we are talking about entering God's rest. Before going to today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Release your faith as we do so. Thank you, Lord. Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is bringing rest to you where your daily needs is concerned. He's supplying you all the rest that you can ever imagine. Praise God. I'm seeing a pregnant lady. Your lady, you're, you're pregnant and there seem to be some kind of complications to your pregnancy. Because I see you're struggling. Um, but I can see you're also pregnant. Can you believe God with me right now? Because I, I heard the Lord said I should pray for you. Father, I pray for every pregnant person that is listening right now. I declare right now that their body adjusts to this baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let your body adjust to this pregnancy right now. Let your body receive this pregnancy. And I declare you will do well until the time of your delivery. And you shall deliver full term. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, hey, God is doing a miracle in your life today. Praise God. All right, then. Now, I read a scripture to you yesterday, and today I want to read it. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 9. Now, today I'm reading the KJV version. It says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God, for he who has entered into his rest, he also had ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Now, verse 11 says, Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. That rest remains. Now, yesterday I was sharing with you something very important. I pray and I hope you really took note of what I shared with you yesterday. So it says, there remains a rest. Then it says, let us labor to enter that rest. So let us work hard to enter that rest. So there is a laboring to labor. There is a work to do so that you will enter the rest now imagine you want to enter into his rest but you have to labor first now you your labor should be such that it will lead you to his rest not laboring for eternity but laboring to enter into his rest last week i began to give you some examples of what we call rest to talk, talk to you about health I spoke to you a little about provision. Praise God. Everything about your life, every area about your life, you are supposed to, God actually has ordained it that you will enter into God's rest. But it doesn't just happen like that. You have to labor for it. And how do you labor for it? You seek the mind of God consigning everything that you are involved with now this is how you begin to enter that rest first you need to know what is god's mind concerning this situation concerning my finances concerning my health see that you need to know what god's mind is now i shared with you yesterday about you know, being led by the Holy Spirit because because it's very, very important. You know, you remember when the children of Israel left Egypt. Now, this is so amazing. God's agenda was to lead them into his rest. 
Now, that's what they miss when God says, I swore that they shall not enter into my rest. This is the reason they left Egypt. They left Egypt and God's intention was to take them into his rest. Now, there was the physical promised land that they were supposed to enter. But beyond the physical promised land, there was also a rest for them when they get to their destination. Now, that rest is the, can be compared to the kind of rest that God did on the seventh day. That's what the scripture is telling us. Now, because they could not flow with God, they walked in unbelief. So God got to a point where he had to swear that, you know what, these guys, there is no point. They will never enter into my rest. He said that. So that's why he's saying that rest, the promise of that rest still remains. Question is who is going to enter? Are you going to enter? I shared a lot of things with you um, last week and previous week. He says, if you will hear his voice, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart like in that day of vexation or provocation. But rather submit your heart to him when you hear so that he will bring you to the place of rest. Now, you see, you remember when Joshua sent out the, Moses sent out the 12 spies to go spy the land. And they went, 10 of them saw a negative picture about the land. But Joshua and Caleb saw a different picture about the land. They saw the same things, but two of them had a different understanding of what they saw. Because they, Joshua and Caleb, believed that God wanted to give them rest where that land is concerned. Now, there's something about being led by the Spirit of God I want to bring to your knowledge again today. Sometimes people feel, oh, because God is leading me, I will never have any issues at all. Now, you are wrong. You see, the leading of the Spirit of God doesn't stop challenges from coming your way. Why the Holy Spirit leads us and let us know He's leading us is to help us overcome the challenges that are going to show up on our journey. As for challenges, they will surely come. God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. Now remember, he didn't just let them to find their own way. He gave them an angel to follow them at, at, in the daytime and also in the nighttime. And pillar of fire by night, pillar of cloud by day, that was an angel. Now, the angel led them out of Egypt. Guess where the angel led them to first? The Red Sea. And Moses parted the Red Sea. Guess the next, pla next place the angel led the, the angel pillar of cloud by day and pillar of cloud by and I led them to bitter waters. Think of all the battles he led them through. Now, these people they were not sorting out their... These people were following. In, you know what it is? You can never make mistakes where that, in, in that light. You have a pillar leading. You just follow the pillar. By day is a cloud. By night is a pillar of fire. Just follow this thing you are seeing. And they were following. The Bible never said they went astray and they got to the Red Sea. They followed this pillar until they got to the Red Sea. Now that's part of the reason they were confused. Why would he lead us here? Then they began to complain and they began to complain and they began to complain because they were wondering how did we get here being led by this pillar of cloud and pillar of fire. But those are one of the experiences also God used to check to know what was in their hearts. And every opportunity God gives to these guys, they just flop it. So now he's telling us, let us labor, therefore, to enter that rest. Lest any man falls after the same example of unbelief. See that? It is ruled by unbelief. Unbelief is what is walking in 
in those who failed to enter. What do you mean unbelief? Will God really do what he said he would do? Now, I don't know what God has promised you before now. It is left for you to believe him and follow his guidance. God can speak to you concerning your finances. God can speak to you concerning your marriage. God can speak to you concerning your health. God can speak to you concerning your children. How do you enter his rest in all these areas? I'll tell you. First, what is the promise that he has made? Now, you can know that promise first as a corporate promise before you even start talking about as your individual promise. Corporate promises, okay, I go to church or I'm a Christian. What has God said concerning my children as a Christian? I'm born again. Has God said anything concerning my children? You understand what I'm saying? Now, you begin to look at that carefully. So you find people say, I find every scripture that talks about, yes, that's excellent. Find it, but don't stop there. Haven't known it, reading it over and over, what are you doing? You're getting to understand how God thinks. So you see the different things God said to different people. Then you begin to find out that there is a consistency in his speech where this is concerned. So you now begin to tell yourself, so this is how God thinks concerning this. Knowing that you can now approach him and begin to pray. That's when your prayer begins, Father. What are you saying to me concerning this matter? I already understand your thinking. I already understand your thoughts concerning it. For example, like Jeremiah told us, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, they are thoughts of peace and not evil. Thoughts to give you welfare, to bring you to that expected end. Now then, if suddenly you begin to hear, look, you're going to suffer in this life because you did this thing wrong, you did that thing wrong. Now, it's easy to tell that this is not God that is speaking. This is not the thought of God. Oh, yeah. It's easy to tell. You see that? Why? Because you know that even if you have made a mistake, God's thoughts concerning you, they are good. So he will correct you. If he, He's not going to pass judgment on you like that. He will correct you first. If you accept his correction, then... He opens the door and you continue in the path of blessing that he has set for you. So the laboring to enter into his rest that he told us about is this part where you find out what exactly has God said. What is his walk towards me concerning my health? What is his walk towards me concerning my finances? Can God really take care of me? Now you find Jesus saying things like, take no thought for your life saying, what will I eat or clothes? What will I put on? Now those things are giving you ideas on God's promises to us. But if I need to enjoy that promise, I have to make that promise personal. Now that's when I go before him with all these words in my head. I go before him and I say, Lord, you said this to Jeremiah. You said this to David. You said this to Isaiah. Yeah. Lord, what are you going to say to me? You must wait for that voice of his to come to you. When that voice comes to you, then you know from that day that he has given you the ticket to enter into his rest where that thing is and you must learn to walk by his word by his instruction and that's personal i've told you this many times it is personal so you 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 hold on to his word and you begin to meditate on it i talked to you about meditation last week you begin to meditate on it meditate on it med until his word comes now, the moment his word comes, it can be by instruction. It can be by, by 
a frequent instruction, for example, like that God can tell you from henceforth every day when you wake up, break bread. That's an instruction. Now you have labored to enter into that instruction. Now with that instruction comes the rest. You see? So when he gives you an instruction like that, and then you begin to obey. You begin to obey. For example, he can come to reenact tight into you. Say, look, from henceforth, don't ever play with your tight. That's an instruction. Is according to his plan and purpose for you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That is the laboring. Now, once that instruction comes, you now, because they clear instruction, you now begin to react or you begin to act and behave according to that instruction. Now, what happens to you? The blessing begins to flow because your obedience to that instruction brings you into the place of rest because Jesus only had to obey the Lord by submitting himself to go to the cross. How that produced redemption and salvation to us was not his business. Are you hear what I'm saying? It is God who received his actions as sacrifice that now will stand to fulfill in us the reason for that sacrifice. So entering into his rest, laboring to enter into his rest, Jesus did that. So when it comes to you, you are laboring in the word. You are finding out every thought of God concerning that thing. Number two, you raise the issue with him. Let him begin to speak to you. The moment he speaks to you, you keeping those instructions, keeping that instruction he's giving to you is now an act of faith on your part. And when you do that physical action, then he is tied to bring that spiritual rest into the realm of the physical for you. Now, this is how it works. So God speaks to you and says, my son, I will bless you financially. Amen. You love it. You believe it. There's a reason he's telling you that. It, but it's not over. That statement in itself will not bring you into the place of rest. So now you begin, to, because you believe, you begin to pray in that direction. Father, you said you will bless me financially. I thank you for it. Lord, I give you praise. I give you praise. Then suddenly an instruction comes to you. My son, whenever you receive any money, do this first with it. It can be your tight. Do this first with it. Now take note of those words. Do it first. Now you have received from him the very thing that will bring you into the place of rest. So the first, after that instruction, the first money you receive, you obey. You remember his word. You obey by doing that thing he has commanded to do first. Now, the moment you do that, you go to rest. Why? I have finished my work. Now the Holy Spirit has taken over. What's the Holy Spirit taking over for? To fulfill everything that is God's intention in your life. Where that instruct, why that instruction came to you in the first place. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Our time is up. Lord. I pray you fill every heart following this with your perfect understanding. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.